So negative feedback is the process that allows our bodies to maintain certain variables. So maintain homeostasis. We're going to talk about positive feedback next. That does not directly maintain the variables. Negative feedback is the one that's going to allow us to be maintain homeostasis. So it's going to apply to our regulated or maintained variables. So in order to have a negative feedback system, we need to be able to detect changes in our system, decide whether we need to respond to those changes, and then actually respond. So that's kind of three basic components that we'll see um, more formalized in just a minute here. So negative feedback, again, is used to maintain homeostasis. Um, here's the, a similar picture to what I've shown before with some range and oscillations around typical body temperature, around our set point where the body gets slightly warmer or cooler and then carries out processes to respond to that appropriately by constricting or dilating the blood vessels and either shivering or sweating to bring temperature back towards set point reverse the temperature back in the opposite direction the stimulus brought it to. So before I draw this out, I want you to brainstorm yourself. What would you need to warm a fish tank? So let's say the system you're trying to regulate is um, an aquarium. And you want to maintain stable conditions of the aquarium. The aquarium represents the internal environment um, of our bodies, but instead it's an aquarium. And you want to both be able to warm and cool it, but let's just do warm it. So if there's cool water, how do you keep that water warm enough despite it possibly being winter in Wisconsin? So some components you might need, thermometer, be able to detect the, the temperature, some sort of control box or control panel, and a heater to actually heat the water. Those are our basic components. Um, so again, let's see this with a little bit more complexity now. So here is an example of an aquarium that's being maintained at a set point of 31 degrees Celsius. If water temperature is too low, this is um, the stimulus that is detected by our thermometer, just like we had listed on the previous slide. There's a wire in this case that's gonna send the information to a control box um, that tells the heater to turn on. That results in a response of water temperature increasing. That response is results in a negative feedback loop because it's turning off the system. By increasing the water here, we have the, we turn off the system that was just turned on. Um, it's negative feedback, even though the response is an increase in temperature. The negative does not refer to the direction of the response. It refers to the effect the response has on the system, on the process itself. The process being an increase in water temperature due to a decrease, which is from the stimulus. Okay, let's see this and how we're going to draw this out. Um, this is very similar to how I'm going to have you write this out. This looks a little more complicated. I'm going to put boxes around some of these and you'll see, um, you'll see why. So this is really the same thing that's shown over here. Not really much new information here. You already knew the water temperature changing. That's a stimulus, right? That's going to be our initial stimulus. I'm going to put a box around that. Um, the signal is set to the thermometer, which is the sensor also sometimes called the receptor. Many sensors are types of receptors, so I use those as, as synonyms. There is um, the wire, remember, that sends that signal to the control box. I'm also actually gonna call this a control center. An integrating center is something that integrates information, takes in information, and just makes a decision about what to do about it. That's what a control center is. So you can use either one of those terms. Um, and then we have an output signal, again, a wire in the case of the fish aquarium that, I'm sorry, I'm a box around, I'll come back to that. Um, an output signal is going to target something. The thermometer in this case 
um, the thermometer is going to have the response. So I also call the target the effector. It's the thing that's gonna have the effect, turn on and heat up the water. Um, so I'm gonna continue putting boxes around the ones that I want to. Um, and this will, these are five boxes here. I'm gonna go to the next slide and um, draw these boxes again with the same terms in them. So these are the generic terms that are part of a feedback loop, stimulus, sensor, control center, target slash effector, and response. So I'm gonna draw those same four, sorry, five again, but we're going to then put in specifics for body temperature instead of an aquarium te temperature. What did I just say those were? Whenever you're doing this, um, actually, I'm gonna do this, the generic one I'm gonna put up here. Stimulus, sensor, or receptor, control center, target slash effector. This is the one I tend to use both for, and then response. And then basically each of these is leading to the next. So in terms of body temperature, um, we could either do the stimulus being high or low temperature. We could draw out the response in either case. Um, let's do high temperature. So you're too hot, you're working out. Um, the detector of that is called thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors are special sensors in our body that detect temperature. Um, that signal is going to be passed via a neuron to the central nervous system. So the control center is always going to be um, nervous system or endocrine system, our control centers. Doesn't that make sense that there are control systems? In this case, it's um, the hypothalamus of the CNS, but let's put CNS is central nervous system. Central nervous system can decide, oh, temperature is off from my set point. Let's send an output signal to what? Well, several several things. Um, one would be sweat glands. What are they going to do? They're going to release sweat to cool the body. Mm. That response is counteracting our stimulus and turning off our system. That's negative feedback. Cool, huh? The two components I, that I want to label not, still, I haven't yet, are these two arrows here. So this is the input signal. That was that first wire in the aquarium. Again, here it's a neuron going to the central nervous system. This is the output signal. Again, in this case, it is in the axon of a neuron coming from the CNS talking to the sweat glands, probably more than one neuron actually, but um, similar to a wire. You can have endocrine system control centers, in which case the output signal is a hormone. Okay, you will see these five box designs a lot. You will draw them a lot. Um, your, your first learning check or your learning check for this one is, is to draw one. So the generic feedback loop, that means without a specific system, um, be able to remember the order of these five things. And I like to draw boxes around them just to be consistent.